Hello! In this video, live stream, I'm going to show you an easy way to put these AN fittings onto the hose. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube and a lot of people struggle and they complain that it's so difficult to do. This is the first way that I've done it and I found it really easy, so I'm going to show you how to do it. So, I've already marked it and I've put a bit of tape on there, I've had it fitted on there, I've put it to where it's got to go. And I put a bit of tape there with an arrow, so I've got to cut it here. So, if we spin you round, we'll go, over, we'll go over to the cutting department. Oh, hold on, before we do that, I need to get this, this fitting off, because that's what it's going on to. All right, so that is going to go on there somewhere. All right, let's go over to the cutting department. Now, this is my first live stream I've done in a while, actually. I've been really busy messing about on this thing. It's getting there. Should be ready to fire it up soon. All right. Just, uh... Yeah, I got messed about with this tripod. I can't get too many comments today because I'm just looking on my phone. Only a couple of comments come up and I'm... It's only gonna be a quick little stream. I just wanna show you guys how easy it is to cut these hoses. Because a lot of people do struggle with it and I don't really know why, because it seems quite easy. So I've got these big cutters here. I don't know what they're called. I've got them on Amazon. I'll just shove that in there like that. You don't need to tape it. I only, I only taped it so I know where to cut it. But I know a lot of people, they cut halfway through the tape to stop it from fraying. But I find it doesn't really fray anyway with these cutters. So I'll put it in like that and pinch it. And then looking for a barb, I'll just make sure it looks about 90 degrees and then you just go dump. There we go, easy as that. Get that bit off of there. And next, 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 I'll get my pliers and just give it a little, a little squash to make it round again on the end. And if you look there, look, it's barely frayed. Tiny bit, but it doesn't really matter. And then we get our fitting. Take that bit off of there. And I see so many comments from people saying they always stab themselves. I've not stabbed myself yet, because all these bits of stainless braid, if you have any loose ones, you can stab your finger with it and... Well, I've never done it. I don't know why everyone's complaining. So then you put that on there like that. Now that I'm doing it live, it's probably going to go wrong. Wind that on there like that, and you've got to look in there, look, and once it meets up rubber on where the thread starts, then we're good. Hey, you've got Craig in the house. How you doing, Craig? Right, so that's looking pretty good. Then, 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 I've got this free one oil. You can get proper assembly lube. I haven't got any, so I'll just put a bit of that on there. Make sure that we get get some of it on that rubber hose as well on the inside. If you don't put the lube on there, it gets really tight. Just make sure that's all the way lubed, lubed round the whole thing like that. I don't think you can really get too much on there, really. As long as it's not dripping off. And then shove that in there. And then it's also worth getting a piece of tape and just putting it on there, because then you can keep an eye on it, make sure as, you, as you're winding that down, this doesn't come off. So then you just wind that bit in. It'll get tighter in a minute, so we have to put it in a vise. And it's not coming off yet, which is good. All right, vice time. Vice time! Uh, donkey there like that. I've got these jaws here, these are special AN fitting jaws, so they, it fits in nice like that and it stops you from damaging the fittings. And it also holds it in nice. Oh, sorry, just hit ya. <laughs> right, get him in there like that. And then. You can get these AN wrenches like that. They're supposed to protect uh, these, but I've got all these here, and none of them, none of them fit. I haven't all that lot I've got. I can't find. Oh, we have got one that fits. 
There we go. All right then. We have got one that fits. Otherwise, I've got this adjustable one here that we can use. Uh, see if I can donk here so you can see what's occurring. All right. There we go. There we go. So I'll just, I'm just holding it on the bottom to make sure that hose doesn't come out and then just wind him on. I've had a couple where they do go really tight and I've had to get a bigger wrench on there. Yeah, I think we're going to be good. This one is actually getting really tight now. <laughs> Sod's Law. The one that I do live is the one that goes really tight. I've done loads of these earlier. All of them went on easy. And this one that I'm doing live, it's suddenly gone tight. So when that happens, I was getting a set of these. I know people say, uh, you're going to mark it up with this. But the thing is, you mark it anyway. Look, look on there, look. That was just with this. And it's already marked it. So. Now we're live, it's going to go wrong. I'm probably going to end up snapping it off now that we're, now that we're live. <laughs> but I found as long as you make sure that if you've got these adjustable wrenches, you make sure that they're on there tight, it should be good. And I'm just going to put that down a little bit so that we don't scratch the other thing in. Funny, I called this video the easy way. <laughs> and it's not been that easy now. It's all right though, still going on. It's not that hard. Right, you ready for it to snap off? Right, still looking good. And then when we get there on the end, I like to just line them up so it looks neater. So I was looking to get this piece here level with my vice jaws and we should be good. Just like that. There we go. So it hasn't moved there, so we can pull that off. And now we can go ahead and we can fit it. And those marks on there, were actually, ironically, done by the proper Goodrich wrench. That's the one that done the damage. With this one, you can really tidy up on there tightly and it doesn't move. So I find you actually do less damage with these. This one here, this... <laughs> I was gonna say, this one here was an Amazon special and um, I wasn't really that impressed with it. And it's just falling apart as well. <laughs> Alright, so now we can come along, we can come along over here, we can put it on, see if we've worked out the right length and see if it's going to fit on. Ah. Let's see if we've worked it out right, see if it's going to go on. Uh, can we shove the tripod? Uh, we can see there, probably. There we go. There we go. So you guys are watching this live. Let me know in the comments what have you been up to. All right, so this, it's actually a water hose, these are. I'll show you the rest of the radiator plumbing in a minute. I'm still waiting for a few more fittings so that I can finish the plumbing off. But we're getting there. We've got most of it done. So right, that's on there. And then that one, if you worked it out right, it should go on there and it does no oh, hold on what does it <laughs> all right we're on there you go look at that we're on we are fitted look there we go that's the hose we just made so i've got a little wide block here look and you used to be able to buy these wide blocks, add two bolt holes in them. Uh, and this chassis has got a little bracket welded onto it to hold it, but I can't find them anymore. You can't buy them anywhere. So I've got a normal one and I've made these two little aluminium brackets look to sort of, I've still got to do it up, but that will just sort of sandwich it and pinch it 
and hold it up to the chassis. So these are AN8s and, well, hold on. I'll show you the whole plumbing system. Let's come around here, I will show you. Oh, reckless buggy's been race prepping his rock bouncer. Nice, I'd love to have a rock bouncer one day. I was gonna build a monster truck or a rock bouncer. I went with a monster truck, but I still want a rock bouncer, so one day. So we've got the radiator. So we've got an AN12 coming out of the bottom of the radiator. And that goes into the water pump. A little adapter there where it goes into MPT fitting or whatever it's called. And then that comes out there, goes into a Y, and from the AN12, it goes into two AN8s. And then we've got one goes over there to that side of the block. And we've got this one here that goes to that side of the block. And I've got to take the alternator, take, take the alternator off to get it to tighten up because I can't get a wrench in there. Uh, and then from there, it comes back out here again. And then we go around here. Oh yeah, Andrew's watching this from school. <laughs> you naughty boy. Uh, yeah, so that's that. That's there. And then it comes round here, round here, round here, round here. And then it goes into this little hose that we just made, into this wide block. And on the other side of it, I'll get you under there. Can you see? Can you see? Probably not. Oh, there you, you can see it now. And it comes out on this side again as an AM12. And then that's going to go around this tank here, along there, up there, back into the radiator. And that's the plumbing done. I'm still waiting for another couple of these fittings. I need one to put on there, another one to put on there. And then that is the cooling system done. Done, done, done. Uh, this is, these are the oil coolers for the transmission. And once I get that in, I've got all the nuts and bolts now. So we've got to bolt the flywheel on. Uh, then we can get the torque converter into the gearbox and get all that lot on there. So that is next project. I'm just waiting for transmission fluid. And then we can get that on there. So that should hopefully come today, actually. So get that transmission in soon. Uh, then these go to the transmission. And then fuel-wise, let me show you the fuel system. And that's the last of the plumbing. So we've, let's go from the tank first. So we've got a fitting on the bottom of the tank that I had to put in there. A lot of people said, why have you got a fitting in the bottom? It shouldn't be there. Well, Monster Jam do it like that. And that's how PEI, who built the axles and they build monster trucks, told me how to do it. So that's how I've done it. So it comes out the tank. And then I still need to get a fitting to go onto that. It's an AN12. And then that hose will run along here. I'm going to put a tap on it as well so you can turn the fuel off. If you want to change the filter, it's nice that you can turn the fuel off and stop all the fuel coming out. And then that goes into there. There's a little cover on there. Good luck when that fuel gets messy. No, it'll be all right. <laughs> it doesn't get messy. And then... Then... What happened to your shirt? This is my welding shirt. <laughs> I'll do the welding in this. And then we've got a fuel pump there. That's the other side of it, where it goes in. And then it goes into this thing here. This is like a fuel cut off. And if you look over in the dashboard, look, you can see that tea lever moving. That's so we can turn the fuel on and off. And basically, when you turn the fuel off, it just bypasses it. It just goes around this, this thing here, and it goes back in on itself rather than into the engine. And then it goes through it, through it, up this pipe, into the engine. This is the thing here that regulates the fuel. It's got a little ball valve in there. And then this is the return, and that goes back into there. And that's it. So pretty much we've got the plumbing done. Two, two hoses to go to the transmission, uh, one fuel hose, one radiator hose, and the plumbing's done, almost. We've still got breathers. This is just a tube that goes to the floor. Uh, we've got a breather hose that goes from the power steering tanks uh, and from the transmission, and that goes into a tank that goes on there. So we've still got to plumb that up, but that's really simple. That's pretty much it, really. And we get the gearbox in, and it's going to be ready to run, I think. I've got the exhaust. I've got to bolt him on, and I've also got a zoomy header kit, so I've got to build my own little zoomies that go up like that. Uh, what else have we got to do? I've got to make a little kickback kit thing. I've got the kit, and I've got, I've got the plate that bolts onto the block. And it's a little stabiliser that goes across here. It helps support the engine. 
Because otherwise, it's on these two aluminium plates, or aluminium for you Americans. In England, we say aluminium. And it's funny when people tell me, when people tell me that I'm saying aluminium wrong or aluminium wrong, they spell it, Kev, it's aluminium, not aluminium, but they spell both the same. So which one is it? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm in England, and in England we say aluminium. I've got the old steering pump on there, look, that's on. I've got my bits back from powder coating, courtesy of Vinny. Vinny's friend done them for me, so we've got these straps powder coated. Got these shock pieces powder coated, and got all the interior back in, and all the bits and pieces in there all powder coated as well. Gear linkage, that's all set up and, and ready to go straight into the transmission once that's in. And uh, we're getting there. We're getting there, guys. Should hopefully be running soon. Rude question, how much did the engine cost? The engine was... What was it forty thousand dollars forty five thousand dollars something like that and it comes with all the supercharger all the all the belts um pretty much ready to go turnkey engine i didn't think that was a bad price because a supercharger conversion for that costs the same and all you get is a supercharger and a mounting kit whilst with this you get the supercharger a bigger supercharger a more expensive supercharger and you get the mounting kit and you get the whole rest of the engine so yeah, good value, I would say. Great goes, you have been busy. Yes, I have been busy. I want to get this thing done. But we're getting there. We're getting there. I think we're going to call that it for the stream, actually. It's only a quickie. It's one of quickly... Oh, I went to Redfin Models yesterday. Uh, someone just said, what horsepower is the truck? It is 1,500. We probably boost it up to maybe 2,000 if we mess about with a supercharger and stuff like that. Went into Redfin Models yesterday, and he's got this in, and he showed me, and instantly, oh, instantly, I thought, oh, what are you guys, what are you guys thinking? Hey, you got Mike Stallone in the house. What are you guys thinking we should do with this? <laughs> Craig says the Lambo's got to be twin turbo, maybe. Right, let's get this out, and I can show you guys. But I want to see you guys have the same idea. What I was thinking. Now, how does it open up? This opens up. Right, there we go. So apparently, an elderly gentleman spent God knows how many hours making this, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours making it, and and uh, he took it to Redfin's. Oh, he took it to Redfin Models. Oh dear, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want to break it. Get that open. Got a little... There we go. Oh, it keeps falling over. Oh, damn you. Why does it keep falling over? But anyway, look, you can see in there, look. <laughs> So let me know in the comments, guys, if you know or have any ideas of what we should do with it. Oh, where is it? It must, must have been this side. I don't know why it keeps falling over. There must be a way of holding it in somehow. Oh, damn it. Uh, anyway, you can see... Look at, look at all that, look. What do you reckon, guys? What should we do with it? <laughs> Compressed air to the moon, says narrow boat hands. <laughs> Come on, guys. If you guys have been watching my channel, what do we normally do with these sort of things? Does this bit... Oh, this bit... Oh, yeah, there's more. Look, look, you can see more now. Look at all that in there, look. <laughs> Someone said ripper. <laughs> well, look, it's, it's pretty cool, look. It's all sort of cross-section, so you can see how a jet engine works. Someone says, this is too cool to destroy. Hmm. <laughs> Rip our motor. Mike Stallone says, spin it to 100,000 RPM. <laughs> I mean, it's massive. Look at the size of it. Look at the size of this thing. I mean, it's 3D printed, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, it's a Rolls-Royce Trent engine, look. 
I'm thinking if it does blow up, then um, we should be able to print some more bits for it. <laughs> right, what else have we got going on? Uh, let's have a look over here. Monster truck bits. So I've got my nuts and bolts for the transmission. We've got all that lot. We've got the bolts to bolt the transmission on. Transmission's there. We've got all the linkages on there, all set up, ready to go. <laughs> Someone's a staircase of doom. No, 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 no. Uh, what else we got going on? We have this little manifold block thing going on here. This is a tank that all the, um, the overflows go into. So we've got to plumb that in. We've got the rear steer pump, even though it got broken in shipping. So we have to get this solenoid thing again. And I think you've seen the raminators. We've got the electric raminator video that's going to come out soon. In the uh, next, maybe on Sunday. Maybe on Sunday. Uh, that went, went really well. Really impressed with that. You've got to watch that 